Welcome back to Ghost Pirate Entertainment. I'm your host, Kanan Becker, and today we do another deep dive into Tubi. And with that, let's get to the list. <laughs> Judged. <laughs> Honeydew is a 2020 horror movie written and directed by Devereaux Milburn. It stars Sawyer Spielberg, Malin Barr, and Barbara Kingsley. Strange cravings and hallucinations befall a young couple after seeking shelter in the home of an aging farmer and her peculiar son after they are stranded in the middle of nowhere. Hi. We were just wondering if we could borrow your phone. Oh, please, please, where are my manners? Oh. You two must be starving. This is a small budget indie film. It is a slow burn, so it does take its time unfolding. But as it goes, it gets more and more full of dread and creepy and uncomfortable. And it goes in directions that I did not see coming, gets more dark and disturbing than I thought it would as well. It's well shot, well directed, the cast do a good job. It really is a great little indie movie that you should definitely check out. <laughs> what are you doing down there, Daddy? Come downstairs. I want to see my number one birthday boy. <laughs> Clown is a 2014 supernatural horror movie. Directed by John Watts in his feature directorial debut, it stars Andy Powers, Eli Roth, and Peter Stormore. The plot's about a loving father who finds a clown suit for his son's birthday party, only to realize that it is cursed. It's not a costume. It's skin. A redeemer. This is another one that's very surprising. I did not expect it to be as dark and demented as it is. I had heard for a while how hard this movie goes, but up until a few years ago, I had never seen it. But when I did, I was just blown away. This movie is gritty, it's dark, it gets gross, it gets gory and graphic. It goes way further with this whole concept than I ever expected it to. So if you've never seen this one, you definitely need to check this one out. <laughs> 30 Days of Night is a 2007 horror movie directed by David Slade and based on a comic book series of the same name. It stars Josh Hartnett, Melissa George, and Danny Houston. After an Alaskan town is plunged into darkness for a month, it is attacked by a gang of bloodthirsty vampires. So in my naivete, I always thought that this was a loved movie, that most people thought it was really good and scary and creepy and all the things that I do. But recently I caught a number of YouTubers, I won't mention their names, but a number of them calling this campy and schlocky and not good and all this stuff. And I was like, really? 30 days of night? So I don't know, maybe I'm just blinded by this era of horror. It's a little bit nostalgic for me. Maybe I just love vampire movies, which is true. I don't know what it is exactly, but I think this movie is fantastic. It's such a unique concept and it does it so well. The cast is incredible, especially Danny Houston. It gets dark and gory and brutal. There's some scenes in it that just haunt me to this day, but I think it's genuinely unnerving and creepy as all hell. So if it's been a while, I think it's a perfect time for a rewatch, or if it's your first time, definitely get on it and check it out. <laughs> <laughs> 28 Weeks Later is a 2007 post-apocalyptic horror movie directed by Juan Carlos Frezzadillo. It stars Robert Carlyle, Rose Byrne, and Jeremy Renner. Six months after the rage virus was inflicted on the population of Great Britain, the US Army helps to secure a small area of London for the survivors to repopulate and start again. But not everything goes according to plan. Oh, there's just so much 
This is what it's all about, gentlemen. Family starting again. Did you like it? It's amazing. When I saw the news this week that 28 years later had rap shooting, I just had to talk about this movie, had to bring it up, had to just talk about the franchise in general because it's been a long time coming. This is one of the better sequels out there because as relentless and horrifying and brutal and everything the first movie was, this one just turns that up even more. I've always just found this franchise so unnerving because of the fact that these are not actually undead. These are not technically zombies. They're people that are sick with a virus and it makes them lose their mind and become just these mindless attacking machines. But the speed that this movie comes at you with, it's jarring. I remember being in theaters watching this and different things that happen in it just really got to me. The whole Robert Carlyle storyline, everything that happens to him is so dark and upsetting and really stuck with me. I just love the whole style of it, the brutality of it. It's just vicious and absolutely fucking goes for it. The speed that it comes at you with, especially back when this came out, was just absolutely like nothing we had ever seen. It's insane. <laughs> Braid is a 2018 psychological horror movie written and directed by Mitzi Perone. It stars Madeline Brewer, Imogen Waterhouse, and Sarah Hay. Two wanted women decide to steal from a mentally unstable, wealthy friend who lives in a fantasy world. But to do so, the fugitives must take part in a deadly, perverse game of make-believe. Once we get into the house, whatever she asks you to do, you're gonna have to do it. No excuses. She says we obey. I just adore this movie. It's so fun. It's so weird and disturbing and just, you can't take your eyes off. It's beautifully shot, really well performed by everybody involved. The sound design, the imagination of it, it's really creative and unique in a lot of different ways. But it's also surprising and goes in a lot of different directions that you just don't see coming. It's twisted and dark and one that I highly Highly recommend. We're not listening to him, okay? <laughs> Ghoul is a 2015 Czech mockumentary horror movie. Directed by Peter Jakul, it stars Jennifer Armour, Jeremy Isabella, and Paul S. Tracy. An American film crew goes to Ukraine to investigate the stories of widespread cannibalism, only to summon the spirit of a notorious serial killer and cannibal. We uh, came here to shoot a pilot for a documentary series about cannibals of the 20th century. In 1932 and 1933, Ukraine suffered a terrible famine, which led many people to resort to cannibalism. So I've always found this to be one of the better found footage horror movies because the idea, the concept of it is so horrific because it focuses on a lot of real things, including the serial killer that they talk about in this is Andrea Ciccatello. And he is one of the most terrifying serial killers ever. I mean, he is so disturbing. If you look into the story about him, it's just bone chilling. I'm a big fan of the last podcast on the left and they did a whole, I think three part series talking about him before, but yeah, I mean, if you look into his story, you'll understand what I'm talking about. And so to make a movie with him being loosely connected to it and the way that they do, I think is really interesting and one that's well done. But at its core, it's just a creepy as hell, moody, atmospheric, haunted ghost story horror movie. Just the way that it's shot, the whole way it looks in general, it has this cold, ominous vibe to it. And then how they tie in real footage from horrible things that have happened in the past it feels really like a real documentary and that just makes it that much more disturbing. So for any fan of found footage horror movies, really for any fans of horror in general, this is one you definitely should check out. <laughs> Night of the Demons is a 1988 supernatural horror movie. Directed by Kevin S. Tenney, it stars Amelia Kincaid, Linnea Quigley, and Kathy Podwell. 
10 teenagers party at an abandoned funeral parlor on Halloween night. And when evil forces awaken, demonic spirits keep them from leaving and turn their gathering into a living hell. I'll just put it out there flat out. This is one of the best Halloween horror movies, period. The look of it, the way the special effects are done, the cast, it's sexy, it's funny, it's gross, it has lots of amazing practical effects and body horror. It gets creepy and disturbing, it's moody, it's atmospheric, it's everything that I love about a horror movie, especially for the Halloween season. So if it's been a while since you've seen this, or if you're a young up and comer and have never seen it, Either way, it's a perfect pick for this time of year, so definitely get on it and check it out. <laughs> I don't believe The Skeleton Key is a 2005 Southern Gothic horror movie. Directed by Ian Softley, it stars Kate Hudson, Gina Rollins, and John Hurt. The story follows a New Orleans hospice nurse who begins a job at a plantation home and becomes entangled in a supernatural mystery involving the house. You lay a line down is how you tell who your enemies are. So if you've watched this channel for any length of time, you'll know this about me. Visuals are what really get me going. That's the thing, the mood and the atmosphere, but the way that things look is what really gets me the most excited. Because I'm not saying the story doesn't matter. If the story's not good, I don't care who you are, you know, it's not gonna be the greatest movie. But I've seen a lot of movies that story-wise are a little thin, take Terrifier for instance, but the visuals and the characters and the way things look and feel is what is so good about those things. And I know because of that, that I'm a little bit of a victim of that when it comes to certain movies. And this is one that I think I might be a little biased because when you're talking about Gothic horror movies, especially the Southern Gothic kind of horror movies, this has got it going on. The look of this, the style of it, the color grade, the way it's edited together, it's creepy, it's ominous. It has this real Louisiana, bayou, hoodoo, voodoo, witch, old world, dark magic kind of thing that I just eat up with a spoon. But with that being said, I still think it's an interesting story too. So I'm not saying that this doesn't also have a good story, but I know the visuals are what really make it special to me. But the cast is great in this. They're all believable and sell it really well. And especially when the movie kind of takes a turn, the way they deliver that really helps it work and keep you invested the entire time. But if you're looking for a moody, atmospheric horror movie, this is a fantastic pick. Is there any type of gas we could use? No, we can't take a chance. It might poison the whole city. Them is a 1954 sci-fi monster movie. Directed by Gordon Douglas, it stars James Whitmore, Edmund Gwynn, Joan Weldon, and James Arness. The earliest atomic test in New Mexico caused common ants to mutate into giant man-eating monsters that threaten civilization. Nations, even civilization itself, threatened with annihilation because in one moment of history-making violence, nature, mad, rampant, Brought its most awesome creation. This movie is so fun. I just love this era of movies. Just these big monsters, these big creatures. It's like nature gone wrong. They're so entertaining to watch. And there's something about the ones that are in black and white to me that are even more magical, even more mysterious and fun. But this has a great cast who all give it everything they've got, even though they're working with this really silly concept. But it's one I've wanted to talk about for quite a while, but it's never streaming. For whatever reason, I never see it streaming on any of the major streaming platforms. So when I saw they added it on Tubi, I just had to talk about it. But if you're looking for a fun, family-friendly horror movie to watch this holiday season, this is a great pick. <laughs> Frank, we got problems. All these murders that have been going on in Fairwater, they're gonna pin them on you. The Frighteners is a 1996 supernatural comedy horror movie. Directed by Peter Jackson, it stars Michael J. Fox, Trini Alvarado, and Jeffrey Combs. 
After a tragic car accident that kills his wife, a man discovers that he can communicate with the dead. So he uses the gift to con people. But when a demonic spirit appears, he's the only one who can stop it. Okay, well, folks, I can do a clearance, but uh, it's not gonna be cheap. There is so much with this movie. Everything from Peter Jackson, if it wasn't for this movie and raising the money for this, he would have never gotten the Lord of the Rings franchise. There's that, and then the fact that this is one of Michael J. Fox's last great roles before we started learning about his disease and he would eventually have to not be able to act anymore. And then beyond that, the special effects in this. This is Weta's first big opportunity and some of the effects they did in this still to this day are mind blowing. It was fun watching the Corridor Crew YouTube channel break it down and talk about the way they did the things in this movie and still to this day how impressed they were with what they did especially working with what they had but when you push all that aside beyond that it's just a phenomenal really fun horror movie it gets creepy at times it looks incredible but it also is funny and just a fun ride everybody does an incredible performance in this but jeffrey combs in my opinion stills the show he is so much fun to watch in this role but I think it's like that perfect movie to watch this time of year, kind of like Sleepy Hollow, where it's creepy and unnerving at times a little bit, but not so much that it isn't still a comfort food kind of horror movie and one that you can just kind of cozy up and turn on and know you're going to have a good time with. So I think it's a perfect pick for this Saturday night. So do yourself a favor this holiday season, pick one of the movies off of this list, grab your popcorn, and your candy and enjoy and i want to give a huge massive enormous thank you to the ghost pirate crew to you guys over on patreon and to the channel members over here you guys mean so 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 much to me and if you would like to help support this channel over on patreon there's a link down in the description or you can become a channel member and help support the channel that way by clicking on that join button down there. But like always, thank you so much for watching. Please crush that like button. And remember guys, horror can be fun. And if you enjoyed this, click right here to see me talk about the best horror content coming to Hulu in October, 2024. And I'll see you guys next time.